Good morning. Good morning. This is the day that God has made. So let us rejoice and be glad as we gather together to worship the triune God. We greet you in the spirit of joy with thankful hearts for all our God has done. Whether you're sitting in the pews or joining us virtually, we welcome you to worship at St. Paul's United Church of Christ. Please know that no matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you're welcome here. In spite of today being December 24th, we are here this morning to celebrate the fourth Sunday of the season of Advent, which is still a time to prepare the way as we anticipate the celebration of Christ's birth. Something we will acknowledge when we re reconvene this afternoon for our Christmas Eve worship. Tis the season to be celebrating the sights and sounds of the holidays, and what better way to do that than through the splendor of our brass music. Let us then prepare our hearts for worship and enjoy today's prelude being offered by our awe-inspiring St. Paul's Brass. Thank you, Brass. Will you please now rise and join me in the responsive call to worship? We will sing of your steadfast love, O God. Forever with our mouths we proclaim your faithfulness. We declare your love, unending, unfailing. We will sing, we will sing. Our never ceasing songs shall show the mercies of God for the ages to know. We declare your love, eternal, enduring. We will sing, we will sing. Our song forever shall record the tender mercies of the Lord. We declare your love, immortal and sustaining. We will sing, we will sing. And please turn to page number 176 in your hymnals for our first hymn of the day, Lift Up Your Heads, O Mighty Gates, number 176.
Please join me in the unison prayer of invocation. God of all things great, we often get caught up in what we do not have, the material things we lack, the access and privilege we may lack, the answers, even that they seem to escape us in crucial moments. We seek your fullness of grace, especially for the times we forget to remember you. Therefore, hold us accountable for the moments we fail to see you in the blessing of grace past. Help us reconnect with our joy and our gratitude. Remind us to aim our joys, our miracles, our deliverances, our redemptions, to name them one by one, for you are there in them all. Amen. Embolden us to proclaim your favor 
as we seek you more deeply. Amen. Good morning. Are there any young Christians who would love to come up for a Christian's message this morning? All right. Thank you guys for coming up here this morning. It's wonderful to see you and I'm grateful to be with you guys here today. Well, have a seat there. Get comfortable. Well, we're almost there. It's almost Christmas. How are you guys feeling? Are you excited? Yeah, all right, me too. What's that? He's fine. Excellent. And look at our beautiful Christmas tree here. 
so decorated, so lovely. There's a couple of things about Christmas trees. Did you know that the evergreen tree represents eternal life? And the lights on the tree, they remind us that Jesus is the light of the world. And I have some extra decorations for you guys here today. Some candy canes. If you would take, take one and pass it along. So candy canes represent a shepherd's staff. Just like the one we have in our stained glass window behind us. It reminds us, and the shepherd's staff, of course, reminds us of shepherds. And you guys are welcome to take those home with you today. Sure, sure, go right ahead. <laughs> Just remember to come back. <laughs> and what Christmas tree would be complete without a beautiful angel? And we have such a beautiful angel at the top of ours. So we have lights, shepherds, and an angel. We have all of the ingredients for a Christmas story. And angels were used in the announcement of the Christmas story. Do you guys remember any of the uh, uh, stories of the angels in, in the Christmas story? If not, I can tell you. Number, oh, yeah, what do you have? Angel. Yeah, she's beautiful. Well, an angel named Gabriel appeared to the Virgin Mary and announced that she would give birth to God's son. And he was be, to be named Jesus. Mary was to be Jesus' mother. What a, a miraculous, how miraculous. And then months later, an angel appeared to the shepherds in the field where they lay and made an announcement of great joy, saying, Fear not, for behold, I bring good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. Okay. Sure, go ahead. For unto you is born in this, on this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And then suddenly, after that huge announcement, there was a multitude of angels singing, Glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, goodwill towards men. Did you guys know that the word angel means messenger? God used angels to announce to the people the good news of the birth of Jesus. And God wants us to be messengers as well, sharing that good news to others, letting them know that a Savior is born for them. And one of the songs that we sing during Advent does just that. It's called Go Tell It on the Mountain, and our brass just played it a few minutes ago. And Pastor Bob, he's going to lead us in singing a verse or two. What a beautiful song. Thank you, Pastor Bob. Well, before I dismiss you, would you guys bow your heads as I say a prayer? Heavenly Father, thank you for these beautiful angelic messengers among us here today who tell us about the birth of Jesus. In his holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for coming up. Enjoy your candy cane.
The scripture today is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 through 55. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled by his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she, and she who said who was said to be unable to conceive in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed is she who is be believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm, he has scattered those who are proud in their innermost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. Grace and peace be to you all from God, our Creator, and from our Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray this day that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts will be acceptable to our God, who is our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, I have a new appreciation for the Roman Catholic Church these days. And I give full credit to my son, Josh. Not only did Josh earn his master's degree in sacred music from the esteemed Notre Dame University, but he's also served for the past three years as the director of music ministries at Good Shepherd Catholic Church in Golden Valley, Minnesota. Josh was raised in the United Church of Christ. However, during his final year at Notre Dame, Josh made a well-informed and heartfelt decision to become a card-carrying member of the Roman Catholic Church, a decision that his family supported 100%. Clearly, Josh fell in love with the rich liturgical traditions of the Catholic Church and fully embraces their religious practices, including those that direct a lot of attention to the Notre Dame herself, also known as Our Lady. Did you know that about Notre Dame? Notre Dame, meaning Our Lady. But 
But even those of us who are not Catholic are certainly familiar with the words, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Years ago, in an article published in Life magazine, it was reported that those words, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you, that those words are recited an estimated two billion times a day around the world. Of course, they are part of the simple Catholic prayer known as the Hail Mary. But did it ever occur to you that the words of this popular devotion were heard first coming from the mouth of the angel Gabriel in the Gospel of Luke? Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. Now, that happens to be the translation in the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible and not exactly the words that we heard read just a moment ago. However, the most familiar uh, version of the verse comes from the old Latin Vulgate of the Bible, which records it, Hail Mary, full of grace. Each year during the Advent and Christmas season, Catholics and Protestants alike pay homage to Mary and her response to God's call that she would be the chosen one to bear God's Son, or as translated in yet another version of the Bible, the angel Gabriel speaks, Mary, you are God's favorite. Now, something that is also significant in Luke's account of the angel's announcement is that Mary speaks. Now, an interesting side note here is that in Matthew's version of the Christmas story, which is quite different, in Matthew's version, Mary is simply talked about, but does not actually speak. And the whole situation in Matthew is handled by the man, Joseph, Mary's betrothed. But in Luke's version, in Luke's version, Mary indeed engages in a conversation with the angel Gabriel. Now what's another interesting little side note is that in the entire book of Luke, women only speak a total of 15 times. Sorry, ladies. But of course, we know the context. It was a different time. So, but not only does Mary speak in Luke's gospel with the angel, but in the latter part of the chapter, she delivers a full speech as if she were singing praises to God. That speech, of course, is what eventually came to be referred as the Magnificat. And of course, there have been many musical versions of the Magnificat. Throughout the ages, Mary, the mother of Jesus, has been considered Luke's model of obedience. Yet, she was an example of true discipleship. She is clearly celebrated for her submission to God and how she accepted her role despite the social stigma and, and physical strain that would inevitably come to a poor, pregnant girl in ancient Palestine. It's important to acknowledge this difficult reality for Mary, which is so ironic considering how so many artistic renderings depict Mary as the picture of serenity, right? You've all seen those different paintings and portraits of Mary, just the picture of serenity. Against all the odds, Mary portrays grace and acceptance. You might say Mary was all in from the get-go. But do you think Mary didn't doubt it first? Or question or hesitate to accept the news? It does say at some point in a translation, 
one of the translations, it does say at some point that she was perplexed. Or another word, confounded. And she pondered this sort of greeting that she received. I think that's just a nice way of saying that she was overwhelmed by the news. But in the end, even after hearing what will take place, Mary submitted to God's will, allowing herself to be used as a vessel of God's plan for humankind. And the maturity which Mary handled the news, the, the maturity with which Mary handled the news was most noteworthy when she said in a translation of the story, let it be with me according to your word. Let it be with me according to your word. Now I have to wonder, do you think Mary's story had anything to do with John Lennon writing the song, Let It Be? You know, it's just too tempting, isn't it? When I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. And in my hour of darkness, she is standing right in front of me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. And when the broken-hearted people living in the world agree, there will be an answer, let it be. For though they may be parted, there is still a chance that they will see. There will be an answer, let it be. And when the night is cloudy, there is still a light that shines on me. Shine until tomorrow, let it be. I wake up to the sound of music, Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. Let it be according to your word. Let it be according to God's word. And may we take these words to heart. Let it be according to God's word with each and every one of us as we come to terms with our own calling. And though rooted in the past, the Christian gospel is always forward thinking. We lean like plants, lean toward the sun. And as we celebrate the winter solstice on Thursday, the longest night, there's a lot of imagery and traditions and customs that go along with that particular season of the year. And a lot of those traditions have been rolled into the Christmas story, like the Yule log, for instance, the symbol of the Yule log, and what it meant to those pagans, ultimately, and how, again, that's been sort of rolled into the Christmas story, though it really was not initially um, from the Christmas traditions. Uh, but so many of those images of leaning into the light or embracing the darkness uh, as, as a way of having a sense of connection and solitude uh, with one another and with our Maker and knowing that the light will come again as the days then become longer, as the nights become shorter. And so we think of that image of plants uh, and when we put them in a window, you ever notice how they kind of, some plants will lean toward the light. And I think as people, we do that. Like plants, we lean toward the window because we crave the light. We lean with longing hearts towards God, toward God's vision of the kingdom to come. Did you ever notice, and maybe you'll think about it again when we pray the Lord's Prayer together in a few minutes, but did you ever notice that we don't pray thy kingdom came, thy will was done? We pray thy kingdom come, thy will be done. As if to say, 
that the best is yet to come. Every now and then, thanks to the prophets of old and the prophets of new, we are given a foretaste. We are given a glimpse of what is yet to come. And the angel says, Greetings, O favored ones. The Lord is with you. And so like Mary, like Mary, we respond saying, So let it be according to God's word. So let it be according to God's word. And when the night is cloudy, there is still a light that shines on me. Shine until tomorrow. Let it be. Amen. Just like to take a moment now as we move into a time of contemplation and prayer. And I love how some translations use the word ponder. And Mary pondered these things in her heart. She was being contemplative, which of course has become quite uh, a popular tradition in all kinds of religions. So let's be in a time of contemplation as we ponder these things. Jesus, 
now we're going to have the women keep singing that. Jeez, men sing, prepare the way. to ask if are, there are any intercessory prayers that any of you would like to offer. We have a microphone here if anyone wants to share a prayer, concern, uh, or even a joy. Anyone? My sister Linda needs prayer. She's been in and out of the emergency room for three months now. It's crazy. She can't remember her birthday now. Yeah. So for this concern, Lord, hear our prayers. I have a, a joy. Today is my, my daughter's birthday. She was born at 1224 on 1224. Right. And it actually was a Sunday. <laughs> so uh, that is a Sunday. 45 years later. <laughs> so for this joy, Lord, hear our praise. And others? Yes, my sister Florence is in the hospital. She's been there in there two weeks. She has an infection in her heart and in her spine. So if we could say a prayer for her, I appreciate it. Absolutely. For this concern, Lord, hear our prayers. Are there any others? Prayers for my husband, Anthony, who is recovering from a fall. He'll be turning 98 this February. Prayers for Anthony, Lord, for this concern. Lord, hear our prayers. This is a joy from my daughter-in-law. Her grandmother passed away this morning, a devout Christian, and my daughter-in-law said she gets to celebrate Christmas with Jesus face to face. So for this joy. For this joy, Lord, hear our praise. Yes, sir. I'd like to have a prayer for my wife, Carol, who has very bad back problems. And uh, she would like to be with us this morning. She couldn't get here, and uh, we love the church so much. Thank you. Well, for this concern, Lord, hear our prayers, and good to have you with us this morning in worship. Any others? Mm -hmm. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. 
our prayers, O oh God, incline your ear to us and grant us your peace as we pray together now the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Once again, I greet you with warm holiday welcome. We're thankful for the newsworthy happenings we celebrate as a community of Christ that we are here in St. Paul's United Church of Christ. I'm Fred Millard, and I want to thank you for joining us for worship today, either in person or online. If you haven't already done so, please sign the attendance books located in the pews and pass them along to the other folks in the pews. The poinsettias this morning are provided by all the members of our congregation. Thank you very much. Now you are aware that we have resumed the tradition of sharing our gifts through the offering plates as they are passed along during the musical offering. As always, if you prefer, you can find the donation link on our website or you can mail in your gift. We hope many of you are planning to join us for the Christmas Eve service this afternoon at 4 p.m. This will feature more music of the St. Paul's Brass, our handbell and vocal choirs, as well as the reading of the Christmas story and a special children's chat being offered by Pastor Bob. If you happen to be celebrating Christmas in other ways and places, please accept a warm Merry Christmas greeting at this point from all your St. Paul staff and friends. Of course, you can plan on singing a few more Christmas favorites next Sunday as we say our final farewell to 2023 with our regular Sunday morning service. As always, we hope you'll take time to enjoy some refreshments and visit with your church friends immediately following the worship in the narthex. At this time, please join me in the responsive call to offering. On this day that has become synonymous with gift giving, let us reflect on the gifts of love, hope, joy, and peace. Let us respond to the generosity of the giver of all things beautiful. Let us give generously to share God's beauty in our community.
join me in the unison prayer of dedication. Generous God, we give thanks for all the beautiful resources you have given to us. Let these gifts bring glory and honor to you and beauty and peace to your creation. Amen. And I invite you to turn to page 220 in your hymnals for our final hymn of the day, the African-American spiritual, Mary Had a Baby, 220. That's a misprint in the bulletin, 220. I think we can officially make the transition from Advent and move into the celebration of Christmas. And so may you go in peace, uh, bearing the name of Christ Emmanuel on your lips. Uh, for he was born, he was born to Mary, he was born for all of us. And so we celebrate and welcome his birth. Go in peace in Jesus' name. Amen.